Amen. <clears throat> One lady, she went to hospital, and she found out she had a cancer four stage, last stage. Just a few months left. She was so despair and no hope. And one day, in her struggle, Jesus met her, met her, and she found Jesus. And after she believed the name of Jesus Christ, you know what happened? She said, cancer is gift from God. And cancer is my hope of heaven. How could she say that? Everyone scared of death? But she said that, I'm waiting for see my Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody found any hope in cancer, right? But a post poet, the Bible, his only reason to live in this world is Jesus Christ. Even die is gain to me, he said. It. Philippians chapter 1, <clears throat> 20 and 21, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by the life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. To die is gain. Think about it. When somebody gives you $100, it's gain, right? Good, good profit. But if you lo lost your $100, it's not a gain. You lost. Life is the gain or death is the gain. We say that life is a gain. I want to live more happily. Happily. But Apostle Paul said, die is my gain. He hoped for living, staying with Jesus Christ in heaven. But he say this word. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. He knew that. I want to go there. I want to see my Jesus. But I stay in this world because of you. God gave me the word to share you. That's why I stay there and preach the gospel. This is a possible say that. This is all Christians, believers say that. That lady who got um, <clears throat> cancer, she seems like a Jesus is her um, bridegroom. She really longing to see Jesus Christ. Cancer is my gift from God. This is living hope to go to heaven. This is amazing. But she has a joyful, happy, and then she lived this wonderful life, even though she had a cancer. And after she went to hospital, doctor said, it's amazing, your cancer gone. No cancer, cancer free. She was so disappointed. <laughs> Can you imagine that? She was so disappointed. When I heard this story, wow. And her left life, she walked with Jesus Christ every single moment. You know, that is our hope. Today, Bible words are like that. Be joyful in hope. Be joyful in hope. What kind of hope you have? When you were young, I want to get married beautiful handsome spouse and get a marriage and have a, a baby and raise well and I have a I hope a lot of money and buying house and after retirement and then no sickness and all of health and then happiness is my hope it's mostly people say that nothing wrong with that that is great but what about 
Bible say that about hope? Is that all? Is that all? Because we only think 100 years. Let's say we live in 100 years, right? In 100 years, I want to be happy, 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 happy. But time really flies. But believers who believe in Jesus Christ, we hoping for after 100 years. We live Jesus Christ in this world, but after our life done, we live in heaven forever. That is our hope. Because, because of that, we have joy in our heart. Or, if you have a hundred years hope, when you lost your health, you're sad again. When you lose your money, you're sad. When your, your children go, you're unhappy. After your retirement, you travel all over the world and your body cannot take airplane couple hours. Oh, I'm not happy again. Is that all? You know, Apostle Paul keeps saying that. First Corinthians 15, 19 said, If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. We are not hoping in this world. We are hoping for everlasting life. That's who we are. Think about it. Sometimes this beautiful hope is covered by temporary hope. We don't see this beautiful living hope. We only see this world, worldly hope. You know, in the desert, in the wilderness, what happened? They ate manna. And the, the big rock is breaking and the water comes out. They're drinking. What happened? And in the cold times and in the night times, so cold in the desert, the pillar of fire, they protect them. In the hot day, in the desert, in the daytime, pillar of cloud is cover them, make them cool. Is that happy life? Better than nothing, right? You know, Jesus opened the blind eyes and dead men walk. We enjoy, we happy with the miracles because that's what we hoping for in this world. You know, in, in the human being, then the kind of miracle in the desert or Jesus performed all the miracle is, is amazing, right? But in God's eyes, the viewpoint of God, that thing says nothing to him. Nothing is impossible with God. Think about it. The more important thing is in the desert, God met them. God spoke to them. God with them. They never thought about that. Only I ate manna. Strange things. In our life, I'm happily live. I eat all kind of hamburgers and chickens and a buffet and all over the world. I enjoyed all kind of good things. Is that all you got? In the desert. God with them. Think about it. When Jesus performed a miracle, they never see Jesus. Wow, the blind can see, that can hear. Wonderful. Who performed this miracle? Jesus Christ. God himself. Among them, the creator God, speak to them. Perform the miracle. Be with them. Died on the cross. Shed all the blood for us. Think about it. This, this is wonderful. You know, God knows my name. God knows your name. Have you ever thought about that? God knows my name? And God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for me. And that much he loves. You are not touched at all. You are only touched by just some food and some living shelters. Think about it. In our life, every single day, Jesus walked with you. But we're not surprised. 
by this amazing miracle, Jesus walked with me, Holy Spirit abode in me. What happened to my life? I'm not that wonderful person. And Jesus with me, Holy Spirit with me. This is amazing. And also, finally, we go to heaven and with Jesus Christ. This is amazing hope. People in this world, they don't care about after life, after 100 years later. And they only care about being like God. In Eden, Adam and Eve, they want to be like God. They ate forbidden fruit. Think about it. In, in, the, in the Old Testament, what is the salvation meaning? In the Old Testament, salvation is belonging. God said, you are mine. You are belonging to me. This is salvation. Belong to God is salvation. The far from God and I, I want to follow you. Buddha's teaching is like that. You can follow my teaching. Then you can be a Buddha. No, we cannot. What is Jesus? You should in me and Christus. You should in Jesus Christ. That is salvation. Romans chapter 1, 6 said that, and you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. We are belong to Jesus Christ. But human beings, people, they want to be like God. After they want to be God, after fall from God, they want to be God. Which means, I want to have more and more and more. The more they got, the more they proud, like Satan. You know, even God have all the universe and he's humble. But you want to be God? The more you have, the more your pride and and this is so shame. <coughs> After Adam and Eve and, and then commit a sin, they hide themselves because they shamed behind, behind the <coughs> bushes. People in this world, they hide from their education. You know what? I graduate doctor. I have a lot of money. My appearance is good like Hollywood movie stars. And my words are like a nice tone. And, and I have a lot of knowledge and experience. With that, you hide like Adam and Eve. This is the world. And they became God? No, they became monster. God's beautiful image turned to monster. And like, like a devil, they mimic God, but they are not. Because they are only looking for worldly things. Proverbs eleven seven said, When a wicked man dies, when a wicked man dies, his hope perishes. All he expected from his power comes to what? Nothing. Nothing. Because they don't see the everlasting hope, the living hope, the, all the hope in this world is fail. All the hope is perish. All the hope in this world is fade away. So sad. In the hope, you find the real joy. What kind of joy you find? No joy in there. Think about it. Abraham, David, Job, they are really rich. Do you think they, <coughs> they ask him money to God? God, I need more money. I need a house. No. They only pursue God alone. They're looking for God alone. This is what the believers are hoping for. Our hope is only in Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1, 27. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> A 
Okay, I'm going to read it again. Thank you. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We only hope Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our living hope. And 1 Timothy 4.10 says that. And for this we labor and strive that we have put our hope in the living God. Our hope only in the living God. Who is a savior of all men and especially of those who believe. You know, this, this should be our hope. This should be our hope. You know, Dante, in his uh, write, writings, he talked about the hell. In the gates of hell, he said that abandon all your hope. Because in hell, there is no any hope. Maybe 100 years, 200 years later, I can, I can move forward to heaven. No way. There is no hope in heaven. You know, our today's word, joyful in hope. And hope in Greek language is alpis. Alpis is you hope based on promised assurance word. Not just, I wish this Christmas wish, white Christmas. No, that is a wish. But the word in there, that is Alphys, 100% sure. What is that? When you, when you won the lottery, million dollars, you're happy. Why? Because you will get million dollars from this paper. Paper is, a, is not million dollars, but you happy when you won the million dollars. When somebody give you $10,000 check, even though that is a one paper, but you happy, you know that that is $10,000 amount. Real money. Think about it. Alpis, you have hope. Do I have hope? You have hope? What kind of hope? If you have Jesus Christ, if you have Jesus Christ, you have a real hope then you should rejoice in Jesus Christ. Think about it. God called Abraham. God called Peter. And they obey and follow because the creator God called them and they follow God and follow Jesus. You know, they have power. What kind of power? Because God gave them, you know, Hebrews chapter 9, 15. For this reason, Christ is a meditator of new covenant. That those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sin uh, committed under the first covenant. You know what? We have a real covenant. Jesus died on the cross. And whoever believes in me shall not perish Whoever means you included. Whoever believes me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God gave us promise of everlasting life. That is our peace. Our hope is not empty. Our hope is not void. Our hope is real. Our hope is really our peace because that is based on the promise of God. God never lied to you. That is our future. Think about it. When you try to buy a house, maybe one day, if I gather $50,000 more, I'm going to buy a house. That is my future. Yeah, you enjoy that. Good. But after our life done, I will live in heaven forever. That is my future. I live with Jesus Christ forever, even though I'm wretched like a, I'm a sinner, like a wretched man. But God call me as his own. God call me my son, my daughter. This is amazing news. You know, are you really hoping for when Jesus come, 
our king. And he changed our, changed our body gloriously, shameful body gloriously. And we face to face our Lord Jesus Christ. That is our hope. You have that kind of assurance, then you can enjoy. You can joyful in hope. And you can walk with God and, and, and worship God forever. That is our hope. That is the reason why we joy for inner hope. We're going to read this word and finish the word. Let's read together. Go. Of faith and knowledge resting on hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. Amen. Don't trust your thought. Trust word of God. Rely on God. God never lied to you. Alpheus, the real hope, is based on the word of God. I'm going to read it again. Of faith and knowledge resting on hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before beginning of time. So sometimes our life is really difficult and hard. I want you to have hope, Alpheus, promise of God. Then you really have joy in your heart. I want us to have this kind of hope until Jesus comes back. And say amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Father God, for your word this morning. And bless all the church family who listen to your word, Father God. Sometimes we're hoping for worldly things. There's nothing wrong. But more valuable things we are looking for, Father, Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, Jesus, you are our hope, living hope. Every single day, Father God, we want to walk with you. And one day our life is done. We'll come up to heaven and forever we live with you forever. Not because okay, according to our acts, but according to our faith in Jesus Christ who died on the cross and shed all the blood. And thank you, Father. Bless all the church family who gather here, Father God. Thank you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of Father God, and fellowship of Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Everyone says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.